Things are going to be heating up for the big guys. Could this be the end of the giant meta? What is up, you guys? It's your host, Galadon. Yes, we're talking about the Inferno Dragon, the real live update footage coming to you very, very soon. But let's check out some 1v1 me bros. Yes, we've got the Inferno Dragon first up against the Lava Hound. And just trying to take a look at some of these single unit confrontations to see how the Inferno Dragon holds up. Now, it's important to know a couple of things about the Inferno Dragon. First of all, the range not as long as the regular Inferno. And second of all, the beam, although it does ramp up and look at it just melt through this golem, not as powerful as an actual Inferno Tower. So it's not exactly a dragon with an Inferno on its back. Uh, similar, obviously, in the way that it ramps up, but not nearly as powerful. Of course, it is going to absolutely change the game. This card right here, instrumental in taking these big guys down. Big tank after big tank we watched just get melted as Clash on Gon and I were working on this video. And watch right here as the Hog Rider so fast, this is at 50% speed, running right past that Inferno Dragon. But check it out, the Hog Rider is only going to get one shot off on the tower despite its speed, and that right there was surprising. Of course, we expected the Inferno Dragon to perform supremely against things like the Royal Giant, the Golem, the Pekka, the Giant. So surprising to see it go through a Hog Rider like that. That could be, maybe, what people are going to call OP for it to be able to stop faster units like that. Check it out as it burns through the giant turns and wipes out the Mega Minion still at 50% health. Right here we've got Inferno versus Baby Dragon. Baby, of course, going to lose, but lose by a lot. The Inferno Dragon still about three quarters health right there. And it's just crazy how good this Inferno Dragon is. Now here we go, Inferno versus Inferno Dragon. And here's where that range comes into play. This is again at 50% speed. There the Inferno has two extra tiles of reach, making all the difference in the world. The Inferno Dragon can't take down that Inferno even though it was already far from at full health. So is this a game-changing card? Well, I, the, it feels like it. It feels like this could be the most significant card to come to the game since its inception. I, I just really feel like this card is going to change a lot of things. Now, of course, it is a legendary. So, hey, I have a legendary curse. My free-to-play account still with zero legendaries, and I am getting dozens and dozens of messages every day from players who are talking about getting legendary chests, getting legendaries in free chests, getting legendaries in crown chests. It's not happening for me. It's just not. My level seven, nearly level eight account, still completely bare of any legendary whatsoever. And it will always be free to play. So the day I finally get that first legendary is going to be amazing, but we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, so yes, I do feel like unless something changes, the Inferno Dragon is going to be probably a very, very popular card. Players are going to want to get it into their deck. It's going to be fantastic, mostly on defense. Obviously, if it gets to a tower, it annihilates a tower, but it's not going to get there by itself. Now, what you're watching right here, of course, is Clash on Gone and myself doing the old how many Inferno Dragons can we get up in one replay. Now, I think he might have beaten me when we did this again on his channel, so you can go check that one out. This was kind of a practice run. We perfected things in the second attempt, and the idea here to take down two towers on both sides to clear the area, and then go for it. Now, of course, the skeletons turned out to be the ideal units to slow down Inferno Dragons. We probably could have started dropping them even earlier right here, because just the tombstones and the Larry army, the skeletons, were doing a great job of keeping the Inferno Dragons at bay. It was kind of a tie there for a really long time. And you'll see right here that we took too long to get both of the towers down before we started the true Inferno Dragon push. Now, obviously, as usual, I will challenge you guys to beat this record or to beat the one that Clash on Gone did on his channel with me and let me know. If I can stop by your clan and check it out, I would definitely like to put it in a video. The Inferno Dragons, one of the coolest units to see in mass. 
All of those inferno streams burning at once, it's like the heat of a thousand suns in one spot on the screen. Very cool, and again, I do feel like this card is going to be significant. Could it be overpowered? It's possible. You never know. Look at Clash of Clans in the past. They introduced a new unit like the Hog Rider, the Witch, the Valkyrie, even the Bowler, and at first it's too strong. They have to tone it back a little bit. Could we see that here? It is always possible, but I also feel like the Clash Royale team has done a lot of testing with this unit, and they're very careful because if this unit were to come in and suddenly be super powerful, it would be that advantage for legendary players that have this card over everybody else. Think of it in tournaments and in challenges as well. Anything that is a game changer could be a game breaker. So I'm guessing they've been very careful. I'm hoping, okay, let's say, I'm hoping they've been very careful to make sure that this card is well balanced and it's not just going to go in and become the new meta, the Inferno Dragon meta of 2016. Hopefully it'll be balanced out and we will see it. Obviously it's a little bit fragile, Kind of like a Mega Minion in that it's not massive, it's not a tank, it's not even like a regular dragon, it's not designed to tank damage, it's designed to put it out. And again, I feel like on defense, the Inferno Dragon going to be fantastic. On offense, well, I have to predict that there's going to be players out there that innovate with this guy and figure out ways to get him to the tower, maybe using the Miner, maybe using a Minion Horde, something like that to distract. Once that Inferno Dragon locks onto the tower, you're in a world of hurt. Now, of course, we have the Ice Spirits. We've got Zap Spells to reset that Inferno Dragon just like we do on the regular Inferno Tower, but we don't have the Log. The Log's not going to touch the Inferno Dragon, so we'll have to see. It's going to be a lot of fun to see what people do with this card, and this was a lot of fun with Clash on Gone just to see how many Inferno Dragons we could get on the screen at once again. Crazy that just the skeletons were able to hold all of these Inferno Dragons at bay. I've completely lost track. I'm curious if you guys want to let me know down in the comments how many Inferno Dragons you see on the screen. Uh, I'm guessing it's somewhere around two dozen or so. And uh, obviously it really, at this point, just came down to time. If we had more time, I feel like we could have gotten an incredible number of them up simply because there's no way that they are going to overwhelm that many individual units. And that, of course, is going to be the big counter to the Inferno Dragon. You might see a resurgence of the Tombstone. You're going to see the Larry Army being used. Even things like Goblins, Single Elixir Skeletons are going to give enough time to stop that Inferno Dragon to reset it, obviously, with the Zap Spell, with the Ice Spirit, and keep it from burning down your tanks. So protecting those tanks is going to be more important than ever. Simply sending down a giant and a bowler and expecting them to overrun the tower is definitely going to be a thing of the past. Lots of small units in conjunction with a big tank, probably a thing of the future. And watch as this counts down just the sheer massiveness of that inferno that is blasting at the center of all of those dragons. It's crazy. It was so much fun and it's going to be an exciting card to have in your deck, hopefully. For some of us. For others, we might have to wait a little while. Now, I know on my main account, I'm definitely going to buy it if it shows up in the shop. It's not going to show up like the starter pack did. We're going to have to get it in the legendary chest or in the shop showing up as a legendary card in the shop. So there you go. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Are you excited about the Inferno Dragon? Do you want it in your deck? Are you ready to counter it? Thank you guys, as always, for sticking around all the way to the end of this episode, for subscribing, for hitting that thumbs up button. Hope to see you guys back here again tomorrow. Now get out there and make every attack a full attack.